Tonight we continue our segments with this year's candidates for Boston City Council. Our guest is one of the candidates running for the seat being vacated by Tim McCarthy in District 5. The district includes Hyde Park and Reedville, along with most of Rosendale and Mattapan. To tell us about her candidacy is Alkia Powell. Thank you very much for being with us, Alkia. Thank you for having me, Chris. Alkia, okay, well, suppose you're out canvassing in the neighborhood, somebody opens the door and they say, uh, what's your background? Why should you be the city councilor? What, what do you usually tell them? Well, I was born here. I was raised in Mattapan, grew up in Mattapan. I currently live in High Park with my 14-year-old daughter, and my mother is in Rosendale. So I love this district. I've lived here. I, I know the streets. I've been involved. I am no stranger. So there's transparency across District 5 for me. Well, you're no stranger to public agencies. You work for UMass. You worked at a couple of city agencies. What made you want to go from that to being on the city council? So that is so interesting. I never thought that I would ever be running for any office because I've always been the behind the scenes, building and pushing leaders. You know, having a unique set of skills, working behind the scenes with um, my time doing at UMass Boston and. Um, government affairs and community relations. I was that liaison that was able to work cross sectors with government, state, and city. So I created and worked on tremendous, tremendous um, amounts of programming with the Boston Police Department, community service departments, the Suffolk County Sheriff Departments, the DA's office, and the city of Boston at that time. And I worked strongly um, on, on policies and issues when it came to dealing with the state local officials. So they all know me very well. Well, uh, one other qualification, You're, you've been a single parent. Uh, you know about getting good education for your child. Uh, how does that affect what you can do as a counselor? Well, you know, um, it's, no, I'm no, it's no secret. I went to Boston Public Schools. So I know, like, you know, the advantage and disadvantage that our school system is facing. But it also stems back to, you know, um, housing that's affordable in our district, in our neighborhoods. Mattapan, High Park, and, and Rosendale, we were suffering from, you know, people afraid of being displaced. And I've been there. I've walked in those shoes. I've, I've experienced housing displacement. It took me quite some time to get back to the city. Um, and find something that I can really afford, and, and it was not easy, and I've been blessed. But I, I've learned that if you have, you know, good housing, safe neighborhoods, you're gonna, the education will fall into place, and then we can build our education system, because now, right now, our school system is failing us. You know, there's a lot going on. A lot of it's at the state level, you know, but because I've worked with all those sectors, I'm able to navigate and get some things corrected and done, even at, on the city council. So that's what really prompted me to want to run for city council. Well, one thing you, you mentioned, I think, on, on your website, you're concerned with is getting inclusive curriculum in the schools. What does that mean? Inclusive curriculums, yeah. Um, so, you know, like I said, you, you wonder what, you know, I have a 14-year-old, and she's, she's currently in private, and it's not by choice, but it was what was best for her at that time, you know, having been displaced and, you know, jumping from neighborhood to neighborhood trying to find affordable homes that I can, you know, raise her in was very difficult, but I was able to use my network and, you know, get her into somewhere that was st stable, and I wouldn't have to, have it, I wouldn't have to worry about you know, her having to transfer from school to school to school. This is Bianca News. We're talking with Alkia Powell, candidate for city council in District 5. Um, okay, I want to ask, come back to housing in this district because, on the one hand, what's good news is, is that it has a high rate of home ownership for people of color. Uh, but on the other hand, there are also many people who are worried about being displaced, especially from some of the larger multi unit developments along the Fairmount Indigo Corridor. What should be done to protect those renters? So you're absolutely right. Um, a lot of my neighbors have been in their, in their homes for over 30 plus years. Some of them are seniors, and they're worried. They should be worried because they're being priced out. They can't keep their rents low enough for their tenants um, because of, you know, let's face it, Boston has become a very attractive city to many. So, you know, what's going on right now is that we have a large uh, attraction of, of people moving into our cities because the jobs have gone up, but the housing uh, uh, has not. 
So there's not enough housing to support those jobs or those folks are coming and moving into our cities. You know, um, so they are afraid that they're losing their homes and they should be, you know, and I know what that feels like. And I want to be that voice to make sure that they are able to maintain and stay in their homes, working closely with our legislations and making sure that they're fairly treated, that their voices are heard, that these new developers that come in to buy these parcels and working through the city are held accountable and making sure that that our neighbors and our families are aware of that process in the beginning, not in the middle. Well, as you, as you, as you hinted here, the developers want to build in this district, especially around Reedville stations, transit oriented, but some neighbors are saying maybe there's too much housing being planned for this area given the traffic problems. What, what do you think? You know, I, I don't think it's too much housing, it's how they're building it. You know, um, they're building these multi condos or or apartment complexes that are like maybe taken away from the original feel of the community and I think that if they come in early on and really explain and get the community involved on how they plan to build it out then it'll be more acceptable you know you you, you, you throw in there a 500 unit building and what that's going to look like in a, a predominantly residential community it's going to look awkward so we want our community to still have its beautification look, you know, its culture, you know, the, the, we want it to still feel like it's home, not this, you know, downtown, fast cars, you know, it, bad enough there's not enough parking on the streets type of community. So it, it, it requires a lot of engagement. It requires patience and it requires the community involvement. This district is, is a pioneer in designated bus lanes, and I think a lot of people are happy with that, uh, in Rosendale at least. But what about the rest of the district? Any, any other changes you would like to see to make transportation work better for people? Yeah, especially for our seniors. You know, it's already difficult right now for them getting around. Um, but let's face it, our transportation system right now is in, a, it's, it's in its biggest crisis. You know, you can get out of the city, but getting back in is not, it's not easy, you know, and then that creates more cars on the streets and that creates traffic. Our transit system has to be fixed, you know, and I, and I, I commend some of our counselors that are working hard to get that done right now. So I stand strong um, behind them with the fear hikes and, and with, the, with the system being no more higher rates, fear hikes, you know, I, I really, um, I'm really commending that, you know, our students are able to ride free this coming fall, but what's going to happen when those trains, God forbid, derail or the services are just delayed continuously, how are we going to fix that and how are we going to work towards it? We can't keep raising the prices and expect, you know, our neighbors to continue to rely on a transportation system that doesn't, is not reliable, basically is not reliable. Uh, finally, you, you have a background in economic development with the city. Any ideas for the business centers in this district to, to get more out of their potential? Well, you know, um, being um, coming from, you know, when I, before I resigned from my post, I was with the Mayor's Office of Economic Development and Small Business. I was one of the neighborhood uh, district business manager, and I absolutely love the work that that division is actually pushing out. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity for small business to grow and to use those resources and just getting it out. Um, having, having an opportunity to, to conduct workshops, oversee the food truck programs, um, the businesses, I, I still I'm going to go back to housing. If we can keep our housing affordable, then continue to strive on safe neighborhoods. Our businesses, we will attract new businesses to expand on and grow the current businesses there. I see it. And with the city's resources, that is that we're capable of. You know, that's one unique thing that I can say is I can navigate all sectors um, from the city, from the state, through government and nonprofit, and, and utilize those resources with ease without jumping through red tape. Thank you very much for being with us. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And can I add one note? It's important that on September 24th that we get out there and we vote. I am number three on the ballot. I am, you know, asking for all your support. Get me in there. Let me be that voice for you. Important numbers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Elkia Powell, candidate for city council in District 5. In a moment, we'll tell you about this year's lineup for the Jamaica Plain Music Festival.